What's going on guys, it's Omni Irk, and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about whether or not Richard is still a good commander in 2021. Go I'm on my second cup of coffee, so cheers. Now people love, people love when you say you have an expertise to Richard because they like to say, hey, you wasted your sculptures on Richard. And honestly, I do not agree. Now, this is not going to be one of my commander tier list videos. I know that's a series that I have going on the channel. This is going to be more of an informal discussion as to Richard's current role in the game, right? And we are going to talk about if he's a good investment or not. And if you want to see how Richard breaks down in those specific categories that we typically talk about, and if you want to see talent builds and his pros and cons, all that stuff is always on my website riseofkingdoms.org you can check it out for every single commander every single legendary commander in the game i have written guides for all them talent builds all that good stuff it's always there there's also some more uh, reference material up in the top bar of that website as well so i put a lot of resources and time and effort into that website check it out if that's what you're looking for but in this video we're just going to be talking about whether or not richard is a good use for your sculptures now people's favorite thing to say is that richard has so many counters in the game now and Compared to when he first came out, that is certainly true because he didn't have any counters when he came out, right? And when I say counters, I mean countering healing because when people think of Richard, they think healing. And I, I think that's a little bit disingenuous. I think Richard's doing a lot more than just healing and we're gonna get into that, right? Because it's been a while since some of us have looked at Richard's skills exactly, right? Everybody just thinks, oh, Richard, healing tank, right? That's what we think, but he does, he does some other stuff, okay? So we're gonna look at his skills here in just a minute. But if we're just talking about healing, people always say well, there's so many counters to that healing right and really there's there's three there's three counters to Richard's healing we have Alexander's second skill which is a 10% chance to reduce healing effects by 30% for five seconds really big debuff window there which is which really does cripple that healing effect then you have our boy salad man okay salad and over here with his primary skill and also a five second healing effect reduction which is really detrimental 40%, so even more powerful than Alexander. And then the third one here is Ramses. So every troop type has a counter to healing. Ramses, however, is only on his expertise. Now it is an immunity, right? It's an immunity from healing. So the other ones just decrease the amount of healing you get. Ramses stops it completely but it's only for two seconds. So if Richard doesn't heal in that time, then this doesn't really counter it at all. And again, this is only if the Ramses is expertise. Now, if we take a look at these three commanders, right? Alex, Saladin, Ramses, these are some of the most powerful legendary commanders in the game. And thus there's a lot of players who do have these commanders, right? And I think that's why people like to say that Richard is uh, no longer a good investment because there's just some of the best commanders in the game. Some of the most common legendaries you see tend to counter that healing. And again, that is a valid argument but I still don't think that, that justifies avoiding Richard entirely. So we're going to talk about later whether or not you should invest in Richard and how far you should take his skills. But I just wanted to go over the fact that Richard does a little bit more than just healing. Okay. What you do when you have a Richard, his primary skill, yes, 1400 healing factor. Now he also has a fan shaped debuff where he will reduce the damage that all of those enemies take by 30% for two seconds. 30% damage reduction across the board is actually really powerful, right? That's all damage. All damage is being reduced by 30% and that's up to five enemy marches, right? You can deep up five in a row. Uh, and, and you know, if you're fighting in a big murder ball, open field combat, right? Richard is really going to be applying a significant debuff to a lot of the, uh, the opposition. Now he's also slowing them down, which means it's harder for them to run away. If you guys are taking the win, if you guys are, if you're dominating the open field and you're winning and you've got Richard out there, the enemies are going to find it harder to run away right now. The downside to this is that it's only for two seconds, right? So I'm not, I'm not ignorant to that fact, A two second debuff is a little bit uh, weaker than we would expect, you know, baseline, I usually assume is like three, right? Three seconds, uh, for a buff or a debuff that's kind of baseline. Um, so it's a little bit uh, on the shorter side, but it is 30% of all damage, which is really nice. His second skill says that troops led by this commander gain 15% increased counter attack damage. So if you are getting swarmed down as Richard, well, great news. You're actually going to deal a lot. You're going to deal extra counter attack damage to those armies, which is nice. And Richard doesn't have any skill damage, right? So he has to rely on his normal encounter attack damage. So it's nice to see that little built in buff there. He also takes 15% less damage just straight up. He just takes 15% less damage, right? So between him effect, uh, inflicting that debuff on the target 
and with him taking 15% less damage, that's really, really powerful stuff. His third skill is where he starts to drop off a little bit, right? But I would argue that the skill is still really important. This gives you 30% of infantry stats. Now, if you are super free to play, then potentially you can avoid this skill or maybe put one point into it, two points into it, something like that. Um, but really, this is the skill where people start to avoid the skill ups on Richard, right? So ultimately, if you're going to invest in him, you absolutely want these first two skills to five. Then you can determine if you want the third skill or how far you want to take that third skill before bringing him to four stars. I think if you're a medium to a bigger spender, I think getting this third skill to five is worth it because again, you're going from 10% of stats to 30% of stats. That's a pretty nice buff right there. It's a really nice buff, especially with that defense. Now his fourth skill just enhances your healing effect, right? So this is kind of like uh, the cherry on the, on the top, right? That's like, it's you're, you're dealing the he doing the healing and now you're doing even more healing, right? And this is actually good because if this is max, then you're countering the debuff that you would be getting from, let's say, an Alex, right? But I know if you're a free to play player or a low spender, you're probably not going to be expertising Richard. And honestly, if you are a free to play or low spender, I would not expertise Richard. I, I just don't think it, this last skill is worth all the heads that you're going to put into him. And, but if you do, right, if you do, <laughs> um, you do get that extra 5% damage taken reduction, which stacks on top of this. So you really get 20% damage taken reduction, more damage to cab and a massive slowdown effect here 50 percent march speed reduction for five seconds so it's like they're going to be stuck in the mud they are not going to be able to move when you're hitting them with those normal attacks right it's it's really really nice and so i think when you look at what richard is doing i think he's doing a bit more than just healing so why would you want to invest in Richard, right? Let's let's just get it all out in the open, okay? We've talked about all of his skills. We talked about the commanders that counter that healing, which is what he's famous for. But we've also talked about the things that he does beyond just healing, okay? So what would Richard's usage be in Rise of Kingdoms in 2021 if it's not going to be that mega tanky march, right? Because dealing damage is not really what Richard does, okay? You can you can read his skills. He's not really dealing too much damage. He has no buffs to his normal attack, right? Well, Richard is actually great for a lot of things. Now, the one thing that I see a lot of players use him for, and he is like famous for this now, is barb chaining, right? So if you don't, if you're new to the game, you don't know what barb chaining is. Essentially what this means is that you grab Richard and you pair him with somebody like Sun Tzu, Ethelfled, or preferably an expertise Isongye, who would be the best choice for this um, because he has that circular AOE. And you send Richard out into the open field, you attack some barbarians, and you pull those barbarians closer to another pack of barbarians. And you hope that the Isongye AOE hits those barbs, they attack you for free without having to spend action points, and you get some rewards for free just by using Richard with Esong. Now, the reason that you use Richard as primary is because he's got nice healing, right? And barbarians do not counter that healing, so there's no downside, right? There's no there's no countering going on. He's just a really tanky, beefy boy out in the open field, and you can essentially send Richard out, and he can fight barbarians pretty much forever, right? Pretty much forever, even in KVK with some of the higher level barbarians barbarians uh unless you're you know you're in like strife of the eight and you're getting hit by like level 400 barbarians like i understand that okay obviously richard is going to have a tough time there but for the most part he's going to be able to survive for a long time and what this means is that if you're a free to play or a low spender you're going to get a lot of value by having richard and esong as your march that's killing these barbs now this is only value that you're going to get if you're an active player right if you're not an active player and you're letting your ap just sit there and you know regenerate and you're losing ap you're losing value and you're not that active well then you know probably don't invest in richard because you know you really need a lot of uh, a lot of activity to get that use out of him but beyond that you can still use richard for tanking during events like karak ceremony you can also use him for things like arms master lohar the event is called arms training right but it's arms master lohar you know what i'm talking about you're also going to get a lot of value out of having your richard in your sunset canyon team because you can pair him with somebody like joan of arc and you can be sure that that marsh is probably going to survive for a long time and that means Joan of Arc is going to apply a ton of buffs to your entire canyon. And finally, using Richard out in the open field is actually sort of a blessing, right? And the reason for that is because people see Richard and they think he's not a threat because hey, 
His debuff is only two seconds. He's not dealing that much damage. So there's some, there's some evidence to support that theory, but the good news is that you can pair Richard with somebody who's very supportive. Again, like Joan of Arc, like Sun Tzu, or you can pair him with somebody like Yi Song Ye. And when you send him out in the open field in a big field brawl, then you're mostly going to be left alone because most players, when they're fighting, myself included, they look for certain commanders that they want to take out ASAP. So when I'm fighting, for example, and I'm, and I'm in an open field brawl, I'm looking for Ethel Fled. I want to kill Ethel Fled because she's very, very frail. If you can take her down pretty easily, I'm looking for pretty much any epic commander. Epic commanders tend to not be as good as legendary, so killing them isn't too much of a problem. I'm also looking for things like Genghis Khan or Minamoto or Tsao Tsao. Those types of commanders, those cab commanders are also, again, sort of glass cannons for per se, right? Like you can kind of take them down pretty easy and those are free kills, right? And most people are looking for free kills. You want to get the most damage out there for your for your armies, right? You want to kill as many things without having to return home. So Richard is typically one of the last things that people hit because they see him and they're like, we're not going to get that many kills out of him. And he's not really dealing that much damage. Now, if you're fighting against coordinated players and they spot that Yi Song Ye or that Ethel Fled as the secondary, then, you know, eventually you're going to get targeted, right? But usually players go by what they see as the plaque, right? So when I say plaque, I mean the emblem that you see in the open field. So if I go over here, actually, let's just use Richard as an example. This is the Richard emblem or Richard plaque that you see out in the open field, right? This is what enemies see. This is what allies see. And what you don't see is that second secondary commander. So you also don't see how many skill ups this Richard has, right? My Richard is expertise and he has insanely good equipment or decent equipment, right? This is sort of baseline. He's got decent equipment on him, a couple of accessories, stuff like that. If you're a free to play player, and you only have a 5511 Richard and you only have all blue equipment and he's paired with a Sun Tzu. Well, on the battlefield, he's pretty much going to look pretty similar to mine, right? He's going to look pretty similar to mine. Now, of course, you know, there's T5 units, so that kind of gives it away. And if you zoom in real close, you can see that he's actually paired with a Martel, right? But until that Martel pops off a skill in the open field, you're only going to see that Richard plaque. And so when you're in a big open field fight, and you're a free to play player, you kind of can hide behind your Richard and sort of do some work without being hit too heavily, right? Whereas if you're a free to play player and you have the Genghis Khan out there, well, Genghis Khan's probably going to get hit because people know that they can take him down pretty easy. So where does that leave us, right? Where does that leave us? I think Richard is still a decent investment in 2021. Is he one of the best commanders to invest in? It depends on your activity, right? A 5511 Richard actually has a lot of value because you're only spending 190 legendary commander sculptures. And I know, I know that that is, it's still a lot, right? That's still a decent amount. And it's gonna take some time if you're free to play to get all of those sculptures. But there aren't that many other legendaries in the game where you can get that much value out of a 5511. And again, if you're free to play or a low spender, I think getting them to 5511 is a good idea if you're going to be active in the game. If you're gonna be killing barbarians, you're going to be doing all of those PVE events that we talked about, right? I mean, pre KVK alone, getting those Marauder kills with Richard, getting the free ones, if you can, there's some good value there. Now, if you're a medium to large spender, I would say definitely consider this third skill, right? Because you're getting 20% more stats, which is a really solid increase in his stats. This fourth one, you can typically leave alone. And then finally, if you are a whale and you're a T5 player, and it's, you know, even maybe if you're a whale in the early game, for sure, if Richard comes around, then I still think that an expertise Richard is a decent commander, right? Especially if you are a infantry focused commander. Now you can also, if you do have him expertise, uh, you can use him in Ark of Osiris for garrisons, right? He's still really good for that usage. I wouldn't use him to garrison in any other scenario. But again, if you are a T5 whale who is doing the most with infantry, right? You can garrison an arc with Richard. And I think that's a good choice. And then finally, if you're a free to play or low spender, who's not that active, you're not a fan of killing barbs. And sometimes you miss events and you're not really into the whole barb chaining thing. You think that's boring. If that's the case, then I would say, you know what, maybe you can skip Richard and just put all of your gold sculptures into Yi Song Ye and Alexander. And then you have just a really powerful march out in the open field. When it comes to when should you invest in Richard? I would say first, you want to finish Yi Song Ye. Like, without a doubt, you want Yi Song Ye to be the number one priority. You want him expertise. 
then you want to summon Alex, right? You want to get him from the wheel. And then you can decide, do you want to get that 5511 Richard? Do you want to get even more than that? Or do you want to just focus entirely on Alex? But I think Richard is still a commander that you should summon because one day you may want to return. Now, if you made it this far into the video, you probably want to know what the talent builds are. This is the current talent build that I use. Of course, these two points and these two points are subject to change. You could take these two points away and put one here and one here for that extra health percentage, or you could take, uh, you know, one point from here and put it in here to maximize damage taken reduction. Uh, I don't know how the math works out to see, you know, these are micro optimizations, right? I would say potentially the, the extra health is better than the two points that I have here, but it's really hard to say. Now, again, there's more talent builds on my website, riseofkingdoms.org. Check that out in the description below. And finally, if we're talking about what commanders should you pair with Richard to get the most value? Well, we've already talked about Esong, Ethelflaed, and Sun Tzu. Those are going to be the ones that you most likely will have. And again, Sun Tzu is actually a really good pair for Richard. I think people kind of breeze over over him a lot but realistically speaking he has a really nice high damage aoe which you don't see on richard he also gets the rage regen which means richard's gonna heal even more because Sun Tzu is there he's got the extra skill damage and he also brings his own little bit of tankiness and health for those infantry units so if you're a free to play or low spender Sun Tzu is the jam as a secondary to richard if you don't have the expertise to Song Ye or Ethel Foot. Now, you also can pair him obviously with Charles Martel. Martel 5511 is very solid, and what that's gonna do is just have an ultra tanky march in the open field. You're not really gonna do damage, but you're really not gonna die, which is great. You can also pair him with Alexander. Now, you could decide do you want Richard first or Alexander first? Richard first for tankiness, Alex first for damage. And honestly, this is an underrated pair. I think this is a very underrated pair. I've used it a ton. I love it because you get the best of both worlds. Alex survives a little bit longer because of Richard and Richard deals more da damage because Alex is there. You could also do a Guan Richard, but if you have Guan, you probably have an expertise to Alexander. And so Guan Alex is probably a better pair for you as well. If you're in the early game a 5511 Caesar might be a good choice. Although how you would have a 5511 early game is very, it's very difficult right from gold keys alone. And then of course you could always pair support marches with Richard as a secondary. That way you can sort of benefit everybody in the open field. So a 5511 Mulan or better would be nice. Joan of Arc of course is a classic secondary to Richard and she's just going to be buffing everybody around you which is super super useful anyway guys that is my thoughts and opinions on Richard in 2021 if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really does help out the channel a ton subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video I know probably about 75% of you guys are not subscribed so go ahead and do that it's fast it's easy it helps me a ton and comment down below what you think about Richard the first do you still think that he's good do you think that he's fallen off a ton i would love to hear from you guys and as always there's links in the description below to follow me over on instagram twitter facebook discord all that good stuff always in the description as well as a link to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc or your mac it's a program called blue stocks it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms and you're gonna have a really nice advantage of fighting the open field when you're playing on a really big screen right like i said it's, it's free to try if you don't like it you could just uninstall it but it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms guys with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace